My name is Darren Daniel. I'm the executive director for the Alliance for Coffee Excellence. Uh, we're based here in Portland, Oregon. We, we own and operate the Cup of Excellence, and I've been director uh, for almost about four years now. Um, and uh, formerly had worked for a, a coffee company that uh, was very connected to Cup of Excellence. So uh, that, that's my role. And, uh, you know, we, we obviously work on the Cup of Excellence program and training and education to oversee all of those. So, yeah. One of the things we did this year is uh, to support the roasters that were going through the economic devastation in the initial months of the pandemic, we, we reached out to all of our members and said, let us know what coffees you're selling um, and we'll put it on our website so that basically, you know, our, the community of, of people that are interested in coffee could say, oh, so-and-so has got a cup of excellence coffee on their menu right now in Korea or, in, you know, where, wherever around the world. And that would also be a resource for farmers to go and look and say, oh, okay, these are all the companies. And we were even telling these companies, just, you know, let us know that you're, yes, you're a member and you're involved, but you're also, you know, we're giving you an opportunity to kind of put your website up there and let everybody know that you're there and you're doing your, your you know, your work and specialty. So that would be almost like a living directory for producers to go and kind of look at that and see where the markets are. And so I think we, you know, when we look at the auction results, we, we then are giving all of that information to, to anyone in the coffee community to say, oh, I'm gonna t look and see who those c companies are and see if maybe there's a possibility of getting market access. So I, I think that's one of the, you know, one of the things that we kind of just, we wanted to promote the roasters because we were concerned about them, you know, in a, in a time of crisis like this. And, and I think it was a good way of kind of uh, continuing to kind of message out. And also through social media, it's been really strong for us to kind of support um, you know, other kind of entities so that it might cross-pollinate uh, um, uh, possibilities for producers. So auction proceeds, I think we're well over, direct auction proceeds are a little over $3 million so far this year, and we're not even done yet. We've got, you know, three more auctions to go. Um, we saw record prices for Ethiopia, for instance, for a natural. Um, for number one was a natural, and number two was washed. Um, you know, that's a very traditional country, but we did see a couple anaerobics um, from Ethiopia this year. Um, of course, uh, there's still a love affair with geisha going on in the competition. We see that, but we also see and have for historically a long time seen Pacamara do quite well. So I always remind producers, you know, geisha is great and it's, it's revolutionized the coffee industry. But Pacamara statistically has been more representational of high scoring coffees throughout um, different countries and is a lovely coffee and Guatemala has done an excellent job with that and uh, many, many countries have you know, done a great job with that. And um, you know, Maragallipe, which is also very prevalent in Mexico, um, th those are all you know, varieties that I think should be considered. And, and certainly, you know, you can't not discuss what's going on with the anaerobics and the carbonic macerations. And, Certain markets are really, really loving those coffees and other markets maybe aren't so much. So that's kind of interesting. And generally speaking, naturals have been uh, very successful and continue to do well in most of the countries. Um, and I think with Costa Rica, we saw the most varietal kind of SL28s and um, well, obviously geishas and uh, katura and, and all these varieties were you know, really, really scoring well as they usually do every year. And so those are, you know, those are things to kind of, you know, consider when you're looking at the lots. But the, uh, the, the, I think the size of the lots was a big part of why we saw the, like the average price for all of the, the weighted average for each auction. Our goal is to get to $10 a pound for all the lots as a minimum average. And we've been pretty consistently in the last couple of years hitting $14 per pound average. And right now this year, I think we're somewhere around $17. So it, we just kind of see that continuing to rise. And, and that's, a, that's a very important thing because it's not just the number, it's not just about number ones and those high prices, which you know, have been like Guatemala was $180 and Ethiopia I think was $108 for number one. I might be wrong about that, but, um, <clears throat> but you know, all of it has just shown that the, the changes we made were, were highly reflected, well reflected in the, the price per pound, so, which is critical. Um, what else about the year? We had less lots going through, um, and and yet at the same time, you know, we have a national winners auction. So we have the Cup of Excellence auction, which is a one-day auction, but then we have 
um, we put a three week window together for the national winners auction. So there was three weeks where buyers could come in and keep, you know, basically um, bidding. And that was very successful this year. So next year, we're surely going to look at copies that score um, 85 to 86 um, would qualify for the national winners um, auction in the, in the international phase, the last phase. And uh, those prices were very, very good this year in, in all of the, the countries, uh, with the exception of Colombia, which doesn't do the national winners. The prices were great. And so that, that's something that we've been trying really hard to push the national winners because the coffees made it all the way through the international phase. They just didn't quite get over that 87 and above on round two. So we may make some uh, changes around that the, you know, the first round of international is 86 and higher, and then the round two the next day is, it goes up to 87 is the cutoff. So we're, we're kind of wondering if we, how we're gonna look at that, which might make for more national winners. And there could be, um, you know, uh, up 12, 15 that, that would qualify for national winners. And typically the COE is somewhere around 22 to, 30 tops that are allowed to go through to the final. We went from 40 to 30 total that can go to COE. So we're, we're kind of strengthening the national winners um, auction by having this, uh, you know, these coffees that make it through and go through and then being, you know, uh, well received by bidders and, and winning bidders. So uh, I think the timeline, opening it up to a longer timeline was one of the big reasons. Uh, there are other, other reasons too, but, but yeah, just to remind growers that it's not just the cup of excellence but the national winners auction is another avenue for you know getting access to market.